No, it's not an Insta post. It's the FIA show. How's it going, everybody? That was a pretty cheesy start, eh? That was awesome. We're supposed to drink after. Cheers. <laughs> Guys, we got a really special episode tonight on our FIA show, a little intimate and interactive. Hallelujah, I'm gonna be away next week on a beach, so we moved it up a week, and I am so honored to have the legendary, the local hero, Chelsea C. Dog Bedard on the FIA show. How are you, Chelsea? I'm great, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. You know what, I've had the honor of working with you for like two years, getting to know you, and I tell you, you are phenomenal. I appreciate that. It's very nice of you. Yeah, totally. I love working here. And I feel well, very honored and blessed. Well, that's good. And that's not the booze talking, thanks to Collective <laughs> Arts, okay? Because we're just on our first one here, okay? Maybe a little, maybe a little, right? Uh, class pictures are out. You had the best class picture of little Isaac, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can amazing. we flash that? It is good. It is <laughs> absolutely awesome. You know what? But I love Chelsea, though, because you know what? You're building your portfolio on rental properties. You work your ass off every single day doing mortgages. Being a mom as well too, what do you think is the, what's the hardest thing in your day that you end up doing? The mom part. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. Cool. What's, yeah. <laughs> what's hard about being a mom? <laughs> well, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah. I think just the being on as soon as you get home, right? Yeah. And not taking um, work home. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's tough, right? It's super tough. Especially when you're like working with people's finances and their lives and everything like that, it is hard, right? Right. Cool. So you know what, I'm super excited. Uh, we had a great conversation about you changing your rental portfolio. Yes. So tell everybody about that because I know it was tough and I know it was a big decision. Right, so I'm still a little bit sour about it, but it's, I'm coming <laughs> around and I'm excited. I'm gonna be selling it, my, rent, my rental property April 2019. Yeah. To purchase an owner occupied. Cool. You know what? Good night. <laughs> Some people leave during the show. <laughs> Hopefully not everybody tunes out here, okay? Um, but I think that's powerful, right? Because a lot of times we're always telling people buy rental property, invest in real estate. But I think there's also something to be said about investing in you and your life. Right. Right? So what was the catalyst you think that uh, made you come around to doing that? <clears throat> I think the being a mom part. Yeah. Um, right now we are living. You're an awesome mom, by the way. Oh, thank you. Don't You're an awesome dad. So, um, just living in a 600 square foot condo, having to run to my bedroom if my son's sleeping to answer my phone if a client calls. It's just, it's getting harder and harder as he gets older. So yeah. I think we're due for an upgrade. I, you know what? I think it's cool, right? Because, like. There's something we talk about a lot, you know, sacrifice, right? right? And I know you know about sacrifice in order to like save today for a future tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. And I did that for a lot. I remember living in my shitty duplex forever and ever and sleeping in a basement that I think smelled like mold and I hope I don't have respiratory issues, but I think it's okay. <laughs> but when do you like, when do you treat yourself, right? It's and it's, It is, right? And it's almost like I think if you don't learn to treat yourself when you sacrifice, you almost never will. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So, and I think buying my house was one of the best things I ever did. I ended up selling three properties just before I turned 35 in order to get the house that I live in today. You know? Right. And it's like, was it the best financial decision? I bet you the houses are worth a lot more today than they were then. Right. But I think there's something to be said about peace of mind. I agree. And I think surrounding yourself with certain people, and I never would have thought about this plan unless it was for working here, working alongside you, reading your book, just you've inspired me. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, no problem. It's I think it's gonna be a sound plan and I'm excited for what the future has to hold. It is. You know what? I think it's a super sound plan because the other thing that's pretty exciting too is yeah you get to go home to a place, yeah you get to put the little guy to bed and actually have your own space right. as well too. But the other cool thing on the flip side is you actually get to transition your rental portfolio now. Yes. So the plan is to actually add um, a HELOC, like a step uh, program onto my house. And from there, either purchase another rental property, maybe some private lending. Who knows what's going to happen, but yeah. I'm really excited about it. Because it's cool, right? Because you end up getting into the house that you want, which, uh, by the way, I, I am wearing this because uh, <laughs> I was talking to you, right? Because Hamilton versus Burlington. I know, I know. I love, love Burlington. I got right. nothing wrong with Burlington. It's just Hamilton's where my heart and my home is, right? right? And I keep telling her, like, you, your dollar goes a lot further I than know, Hamilton. I know, but hey. I know. <laughs> It's like we got grandparents, we have a support system in Burlington, so that's why we're set on Burlington. I totally agree, and I'm just busting your bubbles there, totally. So, But um, I think when it comes down to transitioning your rental portfolio like that, when you buy your own house, you make a great point, you're able to 
pay it down and then reborrow it. Right. Right. And then when you pay it down, you're able to reborrow it and it's tax deductible. Exactly. So I'm excited about that. So tell me, are you going to go because you have how many condos now? Well, currently three. Yeah. So it'll be down to two in April. We're kind of flip-flopping between the idea of do we just sell everything and be as mortgage-free as possible or now with the new mortgage rules, it's harder to qualify. So mm -hmm. do we just keep two, work our butts off? Well, let's talk about that. I don't know. <laughs> you know that's a good t well, because you know what? I'm a big believer in like, I love what being mortgage-free gave to me. <laughs> I became a rhymer, okay? But what mortgage-free gave to me is like, confidence it gave me I call it a swagger a little bit it allowed me to do whatever I wanted to do right because I didn't have that payment over my head right and maybe it wasn't the best financial decision but like maybe I wouldn't have I don't know if I would open a mission 35 I don't know if I would have done the things I did because I wouldn't have had the security that I have right do you know what I mean and right. what's that worth I don't know I think that's I think that's probably a personal personal decision where I don't think there's a wrong one right, right. yeah no I I'm not I'm not too sure like I hate bills. Like I prepay my visa, <laughs> like yeah, okay. to never ever have a bill. But so that's where I'm leaning towards, just trying to be as mortgage free as possible. Right. Well, and I think a good plan for that too is because I I do think that's cool because when you're mortgage free, it's good debt versus bad debt, right? So you're paying down all the bad debt, and then you reborrow, and it's good debt, mm -hmm. right? But then you can sell your property strategically because if you sell all all three in one year, you're gonna have a massive capital right. gain, right? right? And we're not accountants here at Mission 35, but we know good ones, <laughs> right? But you were talking about doing it maybe like strategically, maybe one a year or right. something like that. Right. Because you have, one of them is your primary residence. One's a primary, so we're not selling that one. We're actually selling the investment. Cool. So I've already talked to my accountant. The max I'll have to pay on capital gains is like 18,000. So that's pretty reasonable for having it rented up for five years. You know what? I just love that you could be in a position to say an eighteen thousand dollar bill is pretty reasonable. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I no, but I, no, but I think that's. I think it's about perspective, and that yeah. is a cool thing, right? So, because it isn't bad. You're absolutely right. Considering what you buy that condo for five years ago. Two forty seven. When you were nineteen. No. Okay. No. <laughs> no, but you bought it five years ago. Yes. Right. And now, so you bought it for two forty seven, mm -hmm. and now it's worth. I think we're gonna try and sell it for three fifty. That's amazing, yeah. right? In five years, right? And then you probably paid off the mortgage by how much? Our mortgage is one twenty six. So yeah, that is we're in a huge. pretty good position. And then with the income that we received, the positive cash flow, we've always just put it towards investments, like yeah. stock market. So that's where I'm just like, okay, well, I've definitely made more than eighteen thousand over the years. So yeah. don't be greedy. It's all good. Yeah, and then it gives you a huge down payment on the house of your dreams in Burlington. Yes, Burlington, <laughs> right? Sorry, I'm just kidding. It's I love Toronto. Burlington. I know, I know. I'm just kidding. But that's awesome, right? And now you. And your family can not worry about where you're going to live. You can have enough space. You can entertain and do all those things, right? So what's next then? What's going to be next after that? Do you think you get into your house? You got peace of mind. You got to throw a big housewarming party because you got more than 600 square feet. Yes. Right. Oh my gosh, people can sit down, not stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like I said, the private lending world just seems so exciting. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I'm not sure. Cool. There's going to be for sure more investments. Like it is, it's not just, okay, we're going to be slightly mortgage free and just chill out. No, there's more to come. Yeah. Of course. Like write down our goals all the time and try to. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And you know what I think the cool thing about that here, car alarm going off in the background. Hamilton, not probably. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if it's mine. Oh no, you just set yourself. <laughs> I just set mine off. Okay, that's awkward. <laughs> okay sorry. Now, these pants are a little tighter. I put on some weight. So anyway. <laughs> Um, you make a great point about private lending too and I love your point about making your goals because I think a lot of people look at you and they probably say man Chelsea's got it all together and she's doing really really good right I know you don't see that but I would say that but the thing of it is is that sometimes you don't have all the answers sometimes you don't know what's next and your goals and dreams can always change right and you can always reevaluate them and there's nothing wrong with that right right so what would make you want a private lend versus have rental properties you think I think I just want to diversify. Mm -hmm. Like if I could still have one or two rentals and do something a little different and then still have some money invested like via stocks or mutual funds, like why not? Why not try it all? 
Totally. You know what? Like, I've always been more of a guy where I like to focus in on kind of what I know and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Not a big stocks and mutual funds, but I'm open to debate on that. I like to have a little <laughs> bit more control over things. But uh, I think rental property. So what do you think about rents right now? What do you think is happening with the rental market right now? I think the rental market is absolutely insane. It's mm-hmm. like I even feel awful charging what I charge. But my <laughs> amazing realtor was just like, Chelsea, if you rent what you were renting back in 2014, like people are going to think there's something wrong with your condo. Isn't that crazy? So you need to just like keep up to what market rent is. What is market rents in Burlington right now? So for a um, our one plus done is fifteen fifty. Is that's what you're renting for right now? Yeah, and she actually told me to go sixteen hundred, and I was like, no, that's too high. Wow, okay. that's <laughs> so wild. Yeah, that's and I'm sure like with newer condos, it's probably even higher. Well, you know what's funny, Hamilton. <laughs> it's, and I'm being serious, but <laughs> Hamilton is actually on pace with Burlington mm-hmm. now with market rents. And do you know, I went to a seminar, do you know what the three factors are right now that are affecting rents skyrocketing? Because you're totally right, they're going crazy right now. I'm going to say it's harder to qualify for a mortgage. Unfortunately, even at Mission 35 with world-class brokers, it is Um, harder, yeah. Which, that's making millennials and younger people stay at home with mom and dad longer. Right. So, they're renting, or other people are renting that way. The housing prices are very sky high, so it's easier to come up with first and last month's rent instead of a down payment. Yep, that's true, totally. When, uh, and elderly people now, I heard people that are in their 70s getting older, a lot of them have a ton of equity in their property, Mm -hmm. so they're selling it and renting. And they can afford it. They can totally. Afford it and then now that's driving up the rental market too. Now, so now you have, you know, mama, grandma, and grandpa that are renting as well right. too, right? And then now we have immigrants coming into the country, all, as always, and normally do they rent or buy first, right? They rent. Yeah. So then all the rental market's going up. So, right. and here you are selling a rental property. I no, know. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I think it it's. Burns. <laughs> But I think it's important to celebrate your wins. When do you, when do you take care of you, right? You got to take care of you at some time because no one else will. Right. I know. I think, right? It's going to be bittersweet, but... Yeah, it'll be cool. You'll forget about it in five years right. when you have like three or four <laughs> other things and you have your home. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Awesome. Any yeah. parting words you want to leave with people that are thinking about investing or thinking about buying or thinking about, I should say, thinking about selling? Someone who's thinking about selling a rental property. I think that you sh- you know what's right in your heart. I think that have the really good advice of a trusted realtor, an accountant, a mortgage broker, or a specialist. Um, yeah, just surround yourself with good people and make a sound decision. I think that's awesome advice. Like truly. You know what, because you can always look at things on the side of money, but money doesn't necessarily make all the right decisions. Right. And it doesn't matter what time. You can buy high, low, whatever. Yeah. Just purchase. (laughs) Totally. Chelsea, I think you're absolutely awesome. I really love working with you. I love learning from you as well, too. And I just appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Guys, tune in next. uh, We're going to be off for Christmas time. But... uh, Stay tuned for when uh, we're doing this again. Make this fabulous thing.